time to start another project. I've entered a couple of challenges uh, which are going to be running over the next couple of weeks. And one that I'm really excited about is being uh, created by Encounter Terrain. Now, the challenge is called the Encounter 10x10, 10 10, and it's not 10 inches by 10 inches, it's 10 centimetres by 10 centimetres, which is quite a cool, small build challenge. It's quite unique. Most of the uh, things I see are very large, so it's really cool to be able to try and make something so small. Now, what happens is uh, he gives out a word or a phrase or something like that, which is inspirational. And the challenge this time round is crossings. Now, when I heard that, I immediately had uh, several ideas. And the one that I'm going to go with and one that I'm going to do is of a tightrope walker, walker, easy for me to say, a tightrope walker crossing a ravine or a chasm with a waterfall. So think um, kind of like the Niagara Falls. Obviously not quite to that scale because I've only got 10 centimetres by 10 centimetres, but that's the kind of concept I'm going for. Now I'm going to build it in HO or 170 second scale, so quite small, but also I'm going to go even smaller than that, I think. Eventually this will be a vignette on the model railway and I'm going to be using forced perspective, so I'm going to actually attempt to sculpt my own uh, tightrope walker, which uh, it won't really need to be that detailed because it's going to be so tiny. Uh, and uh, yeah, so there's going to be a lot of fun and new things for me to do on this. Uh, but that's the explanation of what you're about to see. Let's point down at the desk. I'll show you the materials I'm going to start at, talk you through a little bit about what the concept is, show you the drawing I did, which I have done a drawing, which is unusual for me, and then we'll get stuck into making. So here you have it, my uh, rough sketch. The concept is it's 10 centimetres by 10 centimetres, so I'll have a square. And what I'll have is a river coming in from one corner or just the uh, far side of the edge. Coming over with some falls coming down, it will be kind of a curved bank, so which is what happens when waterfall it eats back and eats back and it leaves wings on either side. There will be a tree here and a tree on this side, and the tightrope will be going across between the trees, and then somewhere along there will be the little figure that will be doing the crossing and then at the bottom of the falls there'll be a lot of fog and what have you from the falls at the bottom will be a bit of a lake and then a stream will carry on at the corner so that's the idea uh, i have some materials so i will just show you what i've got uh, tell you what i'm going to do next and then yeah well, i'm really excited to get making okay so here we are what we have is we have a 10 centimeter thick block of polystyrene we have some das clay we have a single wire which is what's going to be my um, uh, tightrope um, and also probably I'm going to um, sculpt around some wire like that for the tightrope walker. I'll probably use green stuff in the end to, uh, to do that. I've got some das clay which is going to be used to make the trees and also fill in some of the landscape and obviously I will also use some of Luke's modelling compound which is so awesome and I've got some keys because what he does is when he gives out the idea, when he gives out the suggestion, you have to take a picture of what you're going to use with a random household item which he suggests to prove that you've not made it before, which I think is quite a cool, simple idea. And yeah, it's always nice to be on a level playing field. Now, I'm doing this because I think it's a cool idea. I don't really care about winning or not. Um, it would be great if I do, because obviously it's always nice to win. But bottom line, this is going to be a fun little build. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get hold of my Proxon and I'm going to cut my um, foam into a 10 by 10 square. I'm kind of umming and ahhing a little bit about how I'm going to do it, but my first idea, whether it works or not, this is 10 centimetres thick, as I say, is to cut 10 centimetres up here all the way across, and that then can be trimmed down to the height of however high I actually want to have this falls. So, and I'm thinking quite high, because I'm thinking of that force perspective, uh, which will then, when it will sit on my model railway, it will look really, really awesome. So I'm going to trim that to a 10 centimetre depth um, uh, this way. So it'll be 10 centimetres this way already, so it'll be about this high. Um, and then I'm going to get my other hot wire tool and attempt to carve out the actual uh, shape of the falls. Um, so yeah, I'll bring you along for that second bit. I'll just get myself prepared. Um, and uh, then yeah, I'll bring you along for the second carving, but not the uh, Proxon. You've seen that had done a hundred times. Here we have a 10 by 10 block. And here we have my hot wire foam factory hot wire cutter. And it's on, and we're going to just see what happens. I have lots of this foam, so it's okay. But what I'm going to start to do is I'm just going to draw down, and we're going to go for the whole height, because I can always trim it down once I've done this. So let's see what happens. If we just run this down and to create, as I described, 
some kind of a shape. Anyway, I think that is going to work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to carve away at that. Uh, I won't run the camera because I'm struggling a bit to keep it in shot and I'll bring you back and show what it looks like. But I'm basically just going to keep doing that, carving it away, and then when I'm happy with the shape I've got, then I'll stop carving. Finished up cutting this yesterday, and as you can see, I carved it quite nicely. Um, it's tall. <laughs> um, actually, how tall is it? It is... 50 centimeters tall, 50 centimeters. So that's cool. And I've also got a 10 by 10 square blue foam, slightly harder blue foam. So what I'm gonna do, I was I left this overnight because I wasn't sure whether I was gonna leave it this tall or not, but I am gonna leave it this tall because I think it's gonna look awesome, particularly when it's on the model railway. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna stick the, uh, the actual falls to the base and I'm gonna let that dry. I'm gonna use gator glue again. It is very strong. Um, hopefully it's not blocked. It's not blocked. I managed to clean that nicely. Good. And I've also got some uh, toothpicks which I'm going to use to uh, strengthen it. So what I'll do is I will put some gator glue on the bottom, which you can't see because I'm doing it slightly out of shot. There we are. So a little bit of gator glue on the bottom there, as you can see. Um, and then I will set that on top of the blue base. And then with that on top and in place I'll push a couple of cocktail sticks through to hold it in place and give it a little bit more strength like so and then we can push down and that will now nicely sit and then I have some plates let me zoom out just for a second there we are so that's now nice and what I have is some plates which I can set on top uh, balance them carefully <laughs> there we are and that will now hold it all in place uh, and it doesn't take long to dry so in about 20 minutes or so I'll be able to take those plates off so I'll let that go off and then we'll think about the next step which will probably be using some of Luke's modeling compounds just to build up the contours at the bottom and solidify it all uh, it all as it goes down um, and then it'll be painting it's hopefully not going to take very long to do this the biggest challenge is going to be the sculpting so i'll probably start that soon as well so this dried fine so what i'm going to do now is i've got my luke's aps modeling compound and i'm going to basically cover the whole of this miniature including possibly the back but i'm not sure about that just yet but i certainly will do all of what you can see here so round on here. So I've done this a lot on the channel, so I'm not going to film the whole thing. However, I will film a little bit of it and then I'll stop uh, because I do get very dirty hands as well while I'm doing it and very messy, so it's really tough to operate the camera. So um, I will show you how to do this very quickly and then I'll be back when it's finished to show you the next step. It's a very simple process. What we do is we take our water. I'll actually shift this back a little bit when I'm doing the mix on camera. I have these little reusable trays, which is what I use for mixing in all the time. And if you wonder why I've got two, it's because when I'm doing a lot, it dries in here eventually, because I do small batches, and that means that I can actually do two loads before I have to stop because I've run out of mixing containers. So what we'll then do is we then take some of the compound, and I've got a little beaker here, which is what I use, put that in there, and then add a little bit of water and mix it and then a little bit more water and mix it until you're happy with the consistency. Bear in mind, obviously you can add water, but you can't remove it. So don't add too much because then you'll have to add more modeling compound and then you end up with a batch which is too big and will dry before you've finished applying it. So I'll mix it up. I just use my finger to do this like so. And that's maybe a little bit sloppy even, maybe a little bit too much water, but it should be okay. Give me a little bit of working time, which isn't the worst thing in the world. So once you've got that mixed, you just slop it on. It's, a, it's an agricultural method, but it works well. Uh, and what it will do is it will seal the, uh, po the polystyrene because obviously um, it's not very um, rigid, this white polystyrene, uh, but also gives a 
texture and actually gives quite a nice rock texture. Uh, now on most of my builds when I'm doing rocks I use bark but I've decided against it on this one. I hope I don't live to regret that. I probably won't but yes I've decided against the bark. I'm just going to use the modelling compound and get a um, nice texture like that. So this will probably be two sessions at least, I think, because I'm doing it obviously on its side and then I'm going to rotate it and do it on the other side when, the, when, that, when this side's done. So I will use this batch up um, and uh, make some more until I've finished doing everything I can get to easily on here, let it go off, and then maybe tomorrow I'll come and finish it. And I'll be back to this build when that's done and I'm coming to painting and uh, other textures, which is what's going to be next. So yeah, I really hope this is quite a quick build because I've only got two weeks to do it in and I have guests coming this weekend. So uh, that's going to be some of my time gone. I was a little undecided on the next step, but I've decided it is to paint this black. So I've got my terrain paint, which is what I'm going to use, just in this big bottle, and I'm going to slap black paint all over it. So um, I'll pop some music on and I'll let you watch or maybe stop filming or whatever. But yeah, black paint. I've done multiple coats of black on this and I'm happy with the coverage now. So what I'm going to do is I'm coming in with my dark grey paint, which I use quite a lot in my rock scheme. And uh, it's going off a bit, I'm going to need to buy some more of this soon because it's just starting to dry out in the pot. Um, but I'm not trying to do a light, uh, an overbrush here, I'm actually looking to pretty much paint it on. I don't mind having some of the deeper recesses having still black but it is a full coverage I'm going for here with the grey. So I won't bother running the camera the whole time uh, because yeah, I'm painting grey on it. But I'll bring you along to show you what it looks like when I'm happy with the coverage and I'm moving on to the next step. I'm not trying for a very dark rock here, which is why I'm going for such a deep coverage of this because I'm gonna bring this to very close to white and have all sorts of other colors and things going on in it. So yes, I will, uh, I will get this done and I'll bring you along when I'm happy with this coat and I'm about to put the next one on. Okay so we're going to make some more progress on this now. What you can see is I have picked out four different house paints because this is what I use for my uh, for my terrain. We've got like a creamy colour there, we've got more of a pinky colour here, we've got a very light browny beige there and we've got bright white here. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to come along where, on this, which I've put some more time in since the last time I filmed. I've just done a light grey. As you can see, I've really brought the colour down to quite a bright colour now. And I'm going to come in with these and put some interest into it. And I'm thinking this is going to be the end of the painting. And then I'll be able to start doing the, um, the waterfall and the water at the top and the greenery and what have you. Um, and then hopefully very soon I'll be able to put in the actual... Um, guy walking across which is a sculpting thing which I'm putting off a bit because I'm a bit nervous of doing it but I'll get to that probably very soon because I need to start practicing and I'll bring you along for that. I'm not going to run the camera for the whole of this process I'll show you what it looks like at the end uh, but those are the four paints that I've got out at the moment. So I put the colours on and I'm really pleased that's that's looking really nice it's really interesting it's got a very peachy colours to it and a bit of white. I've not done the pure white uh, I'm going to do that as a as a highlight um, in a minute I'm just going to do that over the top up here I decided against putting white and I might um, very lightly dry brush over all of it just to draw it together with either the white or with the light grey again just to kind of tone it back a bit but I'm really pleased with how that's looking now and I think the next step which is going to be dressing the top um, so what that will involve is, if that's going to show properly, I think it is, let me just check, 
Yeah, so what that's going to involve is I'm going to be uh, putting the river here and here and a tree there um, and then the tree stump here and the tree stump here, some grass, which I'll probably paint on, I probably won't use flock. And then I'll have the actual tightrope going across to those corners and the little person here. And then when you look at it from the bottom, it'll look very high up. So that's the idea anyway. So I'm going to get on with that now. I'm going to do the little bit of a dry brush um, and then um, I think I might... I might glue some gravel and sand down where I want the water to go tonight. So I'll bring you back at the end of the evening anyway before I finish, just so you can see what I've done. But I'm thinking of putting maybe a little bit of touch of, a, of gravel and stones on there so that when I do my uh, water effect, which is just going to be clear um, silicon, then, uh, then that'll look a little bit different to the rest of it. So I might do that as well. So I'll bring you back when it's finished, but I'm pleased with the progress so far. Time for a little bit of shaky cam, which I don't do very often but I want to do in this case. So what I've done is I've put some gravel at the bottom there and if we go up and up and up and up then at the top you can see that I've put the gravel where I said I was going to around where the river is in there but I've also stuck a tree leaning out over the edge so if we go down below and look up make you sick you can see there there it is leaning out over the edge so I think that would be quite cinematic if you take a picture from down below I think that would look quite awesome so there we are I'm pretty pleased with that uh, I'm gonna let that to dry now and uh, I'll pick that up again in the morning next step is the waterfall now I'm gonna make this using clear silicon sealant and I'm actually going to use this now this is one of the first things that I ever made as a hobbyist. I made this while I was working in Belgium and when I first started getting into this terrain thing. And so this has been, what, four, five years old. And I thought it'd be interesting to see. There is a slight yellowing, a very, very slight yellowing, but it's still pretty clear, I think. Um, I don't think it uh, looks very bad at all. Um, and it's been stuck in this little, what's it here, since I made it, because I didn't have anything I wanted to put it on. Uh, and I think that I'm going to actually make use of it in this build, so that's pretty cool. However, let's have a look at how we go about making something like that. And we use the silicon sealant that you'll get to seal your bathroom or your kitchen or whatever. Make sure that it's clear. I've got some um, cling film or sarin wrap if you're American here, and I've just weighted it down so that it doesn't move so much using these heavy weights. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a thick bead across the top of the of this sheet, like that. Don't have to be too accurate. You're going to be smudging it around. Okay, there we are. Always remember to release the pressure when you're using one of these, and always, always, always put the lid back on. Otherwise, it will go off and it'll be annoying to use in the future. So, with that bead there now, the next thing that you're gonna use is you're gonna use a toothpick. So grab yourself a toothpick, and what you do then is you're dragging it down the sheet. Now, this can take a while, so I might not film it all. And also, you can end up needing to add more silicon as you go down, because as you see, it doesn't actually stretch all that far, even though I put quite a lot of silicon on there. But the key here is that certainly on my waterfall that I'm making this for, there's going to be a series of small um, falls rather than one huge one. So having it done as a small, a small length isn't actually the worst thing in the world because it's going to be bouncing down a bit. So yeah, so you sit here and you scrape and you scrape and you scrape. So I'll get that done and I'll bring you back to show you what it looks like when I'm happy with the quantity because 20 minutes or so of this is not going to be fun viewing. Scrape, 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 scrape. Simple as that. If you only want a small amount of waterfall, which obviously I don't, then you're done. It's a very quick process. It's only when you want to do lots 
that you start taking time. So make sure to keep your wrap flat. So there we are, that's what I've got to in that time. I will just zoom in on that. There we are, you can see a little bit clearer now. So all I'm doing is just scrape, scrape, scrape. I'll carry on with that and I'll bring you back when I'm done with this bit and I'm ready to let it go off. I'm gonna to need to put some more silicon out. Took me a few more minutes. Um, what you can see is I've done one really, really, really long one, which is gonna be longer than the full height, which is what I need. And then I've got the rest of the short ones up here and then another couple of different ones down here. The key here is that you can't really overmake this unless you're never gonna ever make another waterfall again in your life, which I'm going to, because as I've demonstrated, it stores quite well. So anything that doesn't get used can just go back into the sleeve and it'll be ready for the next time. So what I'm about to do now, if I just do a quick pan, I need to put uh, seal the base here with the sandies and seal the sand and gravel at the top as well. So I'm gonna just do that with some uh, watered down PVA um, and then I'll be ready to, uh, when the um, waterfalls have gone off, I'll be ready to start offering it up um, and then work out where my greenery is gonna go. This is rapidly rushing to conclusions. I'm gonna to try to do the sculpting later as well today. Uh, it being Sunday, I would really like to get this finished uh, well, as near to finish today as I can, and I think there's a chance that I will. So I've let these go off pretty much all day, and as you can see, they've peeled off fine. What I'm now considering is how I'm going to arrange them. So the really, really long one, I think, is going to go down this side as a single fall. Um, and the really cool thing with this is you can stretch it. So if you find it's just a little bit short, which this is, I thought it was gonna to be too long. <laughs> Shows how good my estimation is. Uh, if it's just a little bit too short, you can stretch it. So the other thing to say is you can also glue them together quite easily, stick them together. So I've got that one there. And say for example, I wanted to add that one to it. All you'd need to do is use a little bit more of the same silicon and they'll stick together, obviously. I think I'm going to need to do some more scraping down and more making of falls to get the whole thing done. Um, however, one other thing to show you is just how easy it is to tear. So if I want to separate that off, which I do, I can just tear it like that. And then now I've got my single fall here, which is going to be fine. So I'm going to be looking to see wh whether I need to make some more for the other side which I might do. If I don't, it'll be good. Um, I think I will do, yes. Looks like I'm gonna to need to at least make a small amount more. But what I can do in the meantime is I'll be able to get my silicon and stick those falls into place now and then do just a little bit more. I'll do a lot more because I can save it, as I've said. Um, and then when that side's dry, then I'll be able to put the long side on the other side and then, and then we're going to be good. So I'm going to stick these together with silicon and, uh, and then we'll, we'll, we'll crack on with the rest of it after that. So let's get that done. I'll do a little bit of this on camera um, and then most of it not because it's a little bit difficult to manage with the awkward angles. So we'll lift all these off. There we are. And what we'll do, so that's going to come, let's do this a little bit more intelligently. Let's actually have a look at the top. That's going to come down there. So if we run some silicon here. Going to need to get a new tube soon. It's nearly run out. And that will now stick in place. These little bits at the top, they'll be dealt with when I come in and I do the actual top of the um, of the falls. They'll be bent in underneath some more silicon which I'll then turn into uh, falling water. So that will be done then. So now that that's in, what we can do is, that's not the next one. Let's tear that out. As you can see, it's a like everything for me, it's a uh, bit of a kind of Heath Robinson affair. So what we'll do now is we'll fill in there and fill that in. And 
and that can go like that. You can see how easy it is to work with and how easy it is to get your folds in place. Um, obviously a lot of the texture will come when I come to do the um, the painting, put some white paint on it and dry brush it. And I also will be putting some foam on. So when I say foam, I mean the effect of foam, um, which will be done with uh, holofill fibers. But there we are. I may actually not need any more. I may actually be able to get away with it, which would be nice. So let's just and with this in place, I will then be able to build the greenery around the sides because obviously this is a very wet environment, so there will be things growing. Yeah, I'm going to be able to get away with it without... Now the eagle-eyed amongst you will have noticed I'm not using the old, the one from before, and the reason for that is I've realised it's actually not just not going to work, mainly because it's actually still stuck onto some um, sarin wrap or cling film, depending on where, what part of the world you're from, um, and it just isn't as flexible as I need for this job. So. It will wait for another project. Still usable, it's just not usable for this. So there we are. Right, so we have a waterfall from top to bottom, just like that. So I'll let that go off, and then I'll put the big one on. Still got a few bits and pieces which I might dress in in a few places, um, but that's near enough done. Um, and then we will come to the greenery and we will then be able to start on the sculpting which I'm very excited about as well so you can multi-layer these if you want to make it a little bit more interesting and of course you can also sculpt with your toothpick to really blend it in so if you're looking at building some out do that and then get your toothpick uh, which I can't find right now um, and then you can scrape it down. So there we are, a bit of a rambly clip that, but hopefully that was useful. You can see just how I'm doing it. Uh, I will bring you back for the next step when I get to it. All right, it's time to start dressing this and uh, getting the finishing touches before I do the actual walker. So what I'm gonna do is I've got some blue paint here, which I'm going to really, really dry brush on. So I need to take most of the paint off. Let me get a cloth actually rather than my hands and really really take most of the paint off that as you can see I have very little on and I'm just going to dry brush it down the water like so as you can see just even that little amount of water is bringing out the effect I'll do the other one as well and that's going to look great put some more up there we are. So we've got a little bit of a coldness to the water. That's what I'm aiming for there. So with that done, I'm going to get another different brush and I'm going to do the same thing with white. It's not really showing up very well on the camera, but in person it is looking great. So I'll grab the white paint down, get another brush and white, white, dry brush white. Easy for me to say. Let's get that done. We are. That's really starting to bring that life and texture out in the folds. So I'm now going to work on some greenery. So I'll get myself set up and bring you back very shortly. Okay, so I've gathered together some green paints. Um, I've got my shop bought flock and I've also got the Easter kind of strange thing, which I use quite a lot which looks like that. So it's some sort of Easter kind of decoration. And so what I'm going to do, first of all, I'm going to come in with the greens, with the green paints, because at this scale, uh, which is an unusual scale for me, I'm not used to working this tiny, 
and this is even below 172nd or 20 mil, 15 mil, this is very, very small. This scale, you're not going to really see much apart from colours, certainly towards the top. So I'm going to create myself a wash here on my plate back here and we're just going to start to stipple it on in places around the edge like this. So it will look more like moss than anything else um, and then small amounts of texture can be applied using the other techniques. So I'll get this done and you can watch. This is the darker green and I'll come in as well with a lighter one. But obviously as you can see this is just going to give the impression of greenery around the edges of the around the edges of the waterfall. So I'll get this done. I won't do that. Let me keep that in shot. So that was too wet and I managed to get it on from a waterfall. So I can just block that off very carefully and I will be more careful. <laughs> just too watery. Test your paints. Test your paints. So what I'll now do is let that dry completely. So I'll come back in an hour or two when it's completely dry and then we'll come along and we'll do the other bits of texturing. I just had a little bit more time. And so what I've done is I've had a play around with sculpting out my little man who's going to be on the tightrope. And you can see that this took three attempts. The first one is here, which was just too big as you can see. He's um, quite large, even though probably his legs will be cut there. He's still about five mil tall, which is a bit too much, a bit, a bit larger than I wanted him to be. So then at this end, I made another attempt that failed completely, um, which as you can see, however, I have one here that is perfect. So three attempts and I've come up with some kind of an armature, which is gonna be enough. Now, I would show you how I've done this, but frankly, it's way too difficult for me to do on camera. I may do a larger scale one, if I uh, can manage to do that, then I will. But you're basically, um, if we look at this large one, what you can see is we've got a length of wire which is bent in half. Um, and then as it comes down, it goes out, comes the legs and then crosses over. Oh, I'm sorry, and then crosses over to become the legs. And I did this with some very fine tweezers and a couple of hard words. So what I'm now going to do is take this little fella here, who I'm happy with the size of, uh, you can see height wise he is going to be about three mil high which is about perfect and i'm going to stick him to a cork and then very very carefully apply some filler um, and other things to make him fill out a little bit so i can paint him um, and then when that's done i'll apply a little bit of paint um, and then he can go on to the actual tightrope um, and get his balancing stick in his hands um, and then that'll be done. So I'm very, very pleased actually that I've managed that. Um, I'm, I'm hopeful that it's gonna look okay when it's on the diorama, I think it will. Uh, but yeah, that was, that was a fiddly last 10, 15 minutes of, uh, of my lunch break, uh, but success. So a little bit of fanning around later. And what I've decided to do is skip that step because it's just not gonna work how I want it to. Basically, uh, I need to be able to attach this to the tightrope, which is what you can see here. He is attached to the tightrope. And then what we need to do is we need to get him stuck in place so that he is secure. So what I've done is I've made a little kind of stand out of some clamps. And my idea is, my plan is, and if this works, great. And if it doesn't, then, well, you'll see, is to get some super glue gel, which I've just put onto my piece of um, paper here just out of shot and using a toothpick I'm going to uh, attempt to both glue him to the tightrope and then potentially fill in some of the gaps so we'll put a dab of super glue gel just around where he joins to the now I know that I could do this with a um, soldering iron but I'm just not confident enough. I'm gonna to have to learn the soldering iron because very shortly my model railway will come in and I'll start working on that. So this is going to be good practice. 
for working with tiny scales. And the reason I'm putting super glue gel all over him is it's going to work as a filler as well. So we just need to make sure we stood up straight, 90 degrees to the wire. I've also got rid of his legs because there was no way for me to attach him to the wire. So there we are, that's a little bit of super glue gel. What I'll do is I will leave that now. There we are, and I'll come back a bit later, see how he is. And now it really is the end of my lunchtime. About five minutes ago, actually, but never mind. Yeah, so I'll leave that. And the reason, sorry, I said so, the reason I'm doing the super glue gel is that I think that it will actually allow me to paint him a little bit better. Um, and also it fills in the gaps. So I'll act as a filler and it's far easier than green stuff at this scale. If anything is easy at this scale. So we are, right, I'm done with that. I'm gonna stop fiddling and um, then I'll come back and show you the next step when I get to it. But now I better get back to work. I'm entering the home stretch with this now, which is quite exciting. So what I'm gonna be doing now is I've got my green stuff, which I, um, which is the Easter packing, Easter decorations. Uh, and I'm just gonna pick bits out and stick it on where I want to put it. So I'll pop some music on and I'll just do this on, uh, on fast up. Basically, I've got a piece up here, so I'm gonna paint some PVA where I want it to be, like so, and then place it in, like that. And that will just add a little bit more interest. I'm not gonna do very much. I'm quite pleased with how this is looking so far. I'm not gonna do very much, but that just adds a little bit of interest to the overall thing. Makes it look a little bit like there might be some like vines or what have you coming down the side of the uh, of the cliffs. Doesn't need to be too much. Just a little bit of PVA and that will now stick in there nicely. So yeah, I'll pop some music on, get this done, and then we're nearly finished. I'm not sure how well this is going to film. However, what I'm going to try to do is paint prime, prime the walker on his tightrope. So I'm going to do the walker in grey and I'm going to do the tightrope in black. So I think first of all I'm going to do the black. So let me get the black primer out. I'm doing this because this is hopefully going to stick much better to that, uh, to that wire than normal paint. So I'm just going to cut the drop to that, grab my paintbrush, and then we will try to prime the black the wire black. So let's see how well this works. It's very fine, as you can see. Yeah, it's going all right. The reason I'm going to prime the walker in grey is so he's a little bit brighter and stands out. And I'll give him some trousers and a shirt really pushing my painting abilities to the limit there. I've got way too much wire, which is what I wanted. So when I come to fit it onto the diorama, I'll be able to position him roughly central, a little bit to one side. You'll notice that he doesn't have a stabilization bar. I've actually decided against giving him one because I reckon he's pretty, you know, a pretty good tightrope walker. So there we are. There's one coat of the black on. Uh, what we'll now do, I put way too much black in the, uh, what's it? What we'll now do is a little bit of gray and try to pick out the little dude. And then I'll let that dry, let that go off. And then I'll come back later, and maybe do a second prime. But I'll bring you along for when I'm actually painting the dude because this is the actual colour the wire is going to be. But the dude I don't want to prime in grey, like I say, so I can get a little bit of pink. So this is not going to be very good footage. If I can prime it, put, make his head a little bit pink and you know give him some hair and stuff, I'll get my uh, Brigham Nears, my goggles on, and I'll try to film it if I can. 
By the way, there we are. We have a little man, um, if you can see that. I think you can just about. A little man that's on a tightrope. So let's let that go off and I'll bring you back when I come to the next step. That was a fun painting experience. I mean it, it actually was fun. Look at how tiny he is. But he's definitely recognisable as a bloke wearing a red shirt and some blue trousers with brown hair. And he's tiny, tiny, tiny. So there, that's done. So the next thing to do now is to go up and attach him to the diorama, get the trees done, uh, do a little bit more resin. But yeah, the, uh, the painting of the dude is done. Well, it wouldn't be a video of mine if I didn't forget to turn my microphone on at least once for one clip. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to be making the trees that are, that are going to have the tightrope strong between them. I have some homemade clump foliage and I have a little bit of balsa, which is just a balsa down which I've cut to length. Um, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be sticking the homemade clump foliage to the top uh, and um, then uh, it will look like tr trees, particularly when I've painted it with my uh, raw umber paint. So the other technique that I use here is I grab myself a wire brush and then with the wire brush I'm able to uh, rough up the uh, wood to give it a little bit of a texture which then helps to uh, make it look a little bit more like a tree trunk. So that's it. I'll put some music on. You can watch in fast motion but that's basically what I'm going to do. It's only been a couple of minutes, but these are already ready for the next step. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be gluing foliage on. And I'm going to do this in a cheating way using um, super glue gel. Now this super glue gel pot has been pushed too far hard, which means it's all squeezing out. But that's fine, because what we're going to do is we're going to be able to glue this on quite quickly, spray it with activator, and then it'll it'll be done without like, taking ages, which PVA glue does. So just like that. So I'm going to do both of those trees. I might end up making a couple more uh, just to decorate the sides, but these are the two which I need to attach the tightrope to, which is why I'm doing them now. So we'll do the other one in the same way, just copious amounts of super glue gel. Might end up applying some PVA to this to um, make it a little more hard wearing but for now what I'm going to do is this so we attach it on we attach it on with a squish and there we have two trees just like that so I'll let them go off just for a few minutes and then I'll be back to put them in place and suspend the tightrope walker however before then there's one more step to do what I have to do now while those trees are going off is do the water on the top and on the bottom. So I'll show you how I'm going to do it on the top and then I will do the bottom off camera. So we'll just rotate it a bit so that I've got a bit more access and you've got better view. So what we do is we get rid of the dried silicone which is stuck to the end. Let's get rid of that. What we do is we fill in where we want it to be with the silicon and we don't worry too much about accuracy. You don't want to over go, go over the edges, but it doesn't need to look very good at this stage. We're just getting some body on there. So just fill in everywhere where you want to have your water. So you can see the tree in the middle of the dead tree is growing up from the rapids. And then I have some 99% alcohol and a teaspoon. And what I do is I use the teaspoon to smooth the water, not my fingers, which gives me an opportunity and I'll keep going back to the, to the um, alcohol because it means that I smooth it, but I can also get a really good sculpt going on. Let me turn it around a bit more so I don't know how well you're going to see it with the angle of the camera, but you can kind of sculpt the water. Back to a little bit more alcohol. Who says alcohol and crafting doesn't mix? I wouldn't drink it though if I were you. So yeah, so you basically can draw shapes and you can pull the uh, silicon sealant into 
lumps and bumps and what have you, push it in to fill in the gap behind. And yeah, so what I'll do is I will get that done because it's not proven to be the easiest to film because I'm going to be quite close. But I'll get this done and I'll bring you back to show you what it looks like when it's finished. But I'm basically using the spoon to get the shape of a rushing water coming towards the end edge of a torrent and a waterfall. So yeah, that won't take me very long. I will be back in a very short while. There we are, so you can see the folds are in place. I've put a little bit of hollow fill as well, just to make it a little bit more interesting. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to attach the trees. So to do that, I'm gonna very carefully bore a hole with my bradle. More carefully than that, but that's fine because the pin can go in and I can fill that hole with wood glue and it'll be okay. So now what I'll do is I'll do the other side again, maybe a bit more carefully than I do that side. There we are, that was a little bit better. And then we'll get the other side, get the tree, and that will sit there. So there we have the two trees that mount the top of the falls. And over here we have Mr. Dude, I can't believe I managed to paint him. I still can't believe I managed to paint him. And he is gonna go between the two trees. So the reason why I've not glued them on yet is because I wanted to just have a look and see how well they looked and I think they look brilliant. But I am actually going to attach him to one of the trees now and wait for that to dry. And then I will attach him to the other one when it's in place. So I think I'm gonna attach him to this far tree first. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a pin vise and I'm going to actually take the wire behind the tree and then back in through the pin vise and then use some super glue gel to glue it. However, I'm not gonna do that on camera because it's gonna be fiddly and impossible to film. So I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. It's the return of shaky cam, but there was really no way I could film this on the tripod. So here we are, I've done it. There's the fall of the falls, looking really nice with a lot of greenery around the edges and some lovely water effects. And then at the very top, if it will bother to focus for me, which it probably won't, we have the little dude. That's his official name, there he is, he's in focus. The little dude and he's on his little tightrope going between that tree and that tree. And I am very pleased with how that's turned out. That looks absolutely wonderful. So there we are. I am now walking away from this very, very carefully to leave it all to set. And uh, I'll get some proper glamour pictures as well. But um, yeah, crossing for Encounter 10 by 10. Wow, what a build. Very, very pleased with that. Well, there we are. What an absolutely incredible build that was. So much fun. And I'm so glad that I decided when I saw uh, the challenge being publicised on Instagram, I thought, you know what, I'm going to give that a go. It's been a really enjoyable build. And not just because I've enjoyed making this, but because the way that Encounter Terrain runs this, they have a real community build and it's brilliant. I mean, I'm in a few challenges and not all of them are quite this awesome. Uh, he has Instagram Messenger and also has a Discord group and everyone gets involved and there's a lot of banter and a lot of fun, a lot of sharing and you get to really cheer each other on. It's not really a competition that you're in to win, you're in it to have fun and take part. And that sounds twee, but it's really, really true. And I've really enjoyed this. So thank you so much for uh, letting me take part and I'm looking forward to the next months already. So if you've enjoyed this build and if you've uh, learned something, please let me know in the comments below. And if you want to get involved in the next one, in the next competition that is being run, then just get in touch, go onto Instagram, look for encounterterrain.com. I'll put the links in the description below and sign yourself up and get stuck in and have a laugh because yeah, it'd be great to see you there and it'd be good to have more people involved. I will close off by saying as I always do, and this crazy time, which is getting crazier again, I think around the world, but yeah, please stay healthy, stay safe and stay well. Mm -hmm.